Hello and welcome back. It's another Thursday, so that means another round of inspiration and we're still on it. We're still on the road for our dirty sales tricks. We're finally getting to a wrap up position where we're going to look a little bit um, again in the next, I think, two episodes in how um, daily search tricks are combined, but then we're with the biggest dirty tricks in the book are done and moving on. Um, I think it's gonna be a round of sales mistakes that most people do. And that's kind of like where we start out today. Insecurity sell, it's a big selling technique. And truth be told, it's also a very successful selling technique. So if you trigger the insecurities of your targeted group, of your potential clients, it works. So why do I'm calling it a um, dirty sales trick? And why do I advise on quite possibly staying quite far away from it? The insecurity sell, and let's get back to how is a dirty sales trick build up. Like every sales strategy build up, it has to fit the need. Okay, so that we all understood now, a sales tactic fits the needs of our potential client group. Second point, it has to trigger something, any kind of thought process, and the any kind of thought process is the problem with the most of the dirty sales tricks, um, to get your potential client moving and to follow you, to like, like, subscribe, you know, all the shebang, or to come into a great German speaking real business magic challenge. You know, always a good idea to pitch the sales at the beginning and not at the end, because now I still have a chance that you follow me at the end. You all know there's coming something and end the video, but back to insecurity sell. So we know already, you know, the drill down, the basic outline of how to do sales tricks and of our sales tactic. It has to have a certain degree of fit and a psychology or psychological trigger um, is very useful to get your client moving. But um, as any kind of dirty sales tricks, it is a potential in dirtiness. We had many different kinds of ways where like the downside um, is normally as always, every dirty sales trick has the problem on long-term benefits. So nothing the same, nothing changes here with an insecurity cell. The long-term benefits of an insecurity cell are very, very low. Um, considering if you start out triggering the insecurities of your potential client, then helping to overcome them, you have to go even deeper. So you have to get meaner down the process. So, and that's where the thing, while I call them dirty sales tricks. And, the persons I consult, the companies I consult, the stuff I develop are not companies which have like thousands of people of salespeople in their arsenal. I did that and I'm doing that sometimes still, but very, very seldomly. Um, so my normal clientele are small and mid-sized businesses and business owners who don't have a big sales force. So it's in kind of the client's, my client hands, to do the sales job. Think about solopreneurs. The most essential skill set you have is, first of all, something, a skill set you can offer your clients or product your clients, but also have to sell that stuff. So, considering that group and now turn around in the sales team, um, you're probably not in the position you want to work with your clients for a long term project and getting Mina in a long term project in the sales process. It's not a fun thing to do. And believe me, I sometimes have to step up my own game, my leadership persistence, like that, that's not gonna work out. But then we're in a client relationship and it's still feeling uncomfortable. So if you start out using selling over insecurities, it's kind of a downhill road. And especially for you, if you have more high ethical standards in where you want to sell, but also where your product or your service is around. So, but as I already told you, the truth is insecurity cell works. There is a broad, the insecurity cell is one of the biggest um, selling techniques which are used out there and you can learn out there. It's because it's starting out from um, the insecurities about that there is not enough. 
think about limiting. We only have 25 spaces in our digital online program, which thousands of people can buy and we would not run out of space, but we just have 25 of them. Just classical limiting. Um, size of um, how many people can join or buy the product. Um, other sites also sell, um, triggering the insecurity part is we're just open for like 10 hours. You can buy it now and then it's gone forever. Classical baseline insecurity sales. So that's the limiting, the limiting stuff you all see around. It's always targeting at that insecurity about, I want to go in the bandwagon. I want to go with you. I want to join. And now it's where I'm running out of time or out of the out of stock. And that's why we want to buy it. So that's kind of where the starting point of the insecurity sell is. Of course, and that's kind of like why insecurity sell is not always a really sales trick. If I'm holding an offline um, seminar in our long link new HQ, which I so much enjoy working in. Sorry, side note. But um, then, of course, there is not um, an unlimited amount of um, um, places, considering especially we hygiene and stuff like that at the current situation. So, of course, there are just a certain amount of places. And if you sell art, there are just 25 of these um, reproduction you make. That's also totally true. So sometimes and in quite a lot of or at least some products limiting stuff is and also time is looking at limiting stuff. If I'm doing another sprint workshop, um, of course, there is a certain date. And if you don't join on that date, there is a workshop. So the limiting stuff is quite normal. But why it got out of hand over the years and um, it really got out of hand. You remember still the red buttons, yellow, red blinking just 14 hours and 17 minutes and 60 seconds. Oh, that's true. 50 seconds. Yeah, that's just kind of the limiting, always telling you that insecurity and always bashing you like now you have to act now. So that's when it got dirty especially when there is no limiting stuff and especially the problem over the years that it was totally lying. So that's where the insecurity sales starts out. And then there's of course the very rhetorical driven communicative um, sales pitch on triggering the insecurities of your target group. Insecurities can be if you open up um, the box of the Pandora, depending on what you do, you really like go deep. And also there's always a certain kind of blame cell in it. So insecurities, if you want to target the, or when you are targeted with the insecurity cell, it's then when you feel like I'm not good enough, I'm too little, I'm too less, there is no encouragement, but if you buy that product, we will solve that solution. So that's uh, that problem. Um, that's kind of like the baseline of an insecurity cell. You trigger your, your partner which should be your client and a partner in the future down to getting them down to a certain kind of level then they can uh, then you level them up in the sales process and um finally they buy stuff that's a very classical behavioral mechanism but the thing is if you just trigger the insecurities and most of these settings techniques don't level you up so there is the dirty sales trick and as you know, if you watch the German and the English version, in the English version, I can go a little bit of a different twist. Why? Because in the English speaking world, sales technique a little bit better well known than in the German speaking part. Um, most of German speaking, the German speaking crowd doesn't have a clue about sales. I'm not targeting like the sales professional with these videos. It's the consumer. It's the business owner who knows I have to do a sales shop, but I really don't have a clue and I really don't want to do it. So just if you think about who is my freaking target group for these videos and why we can go a little bit more drifty on the English speaking part is because on the English speaking part, there is a broader sales knowledge, not the biggest, but a broader sales knowledge. So insecurity. So, um, so you target and what you don't do is you kind of open up a wound for um with your client in a sales pitch or normally especially in working in working one to plenty but it's also working extremely well one to one but you don't give them the solution so you just you let the wound openly bleed and um that's kind of the baseline of the insecurity cell you don't level them up you don't help them out so you just like let them suffer in their world and that's kind of like why these uh insecurity cells work but also you have to look at 
how on a big scale they work and they don't work on the biggest scale. So what people don't tell you about these dirty sales tricks is yes, they work. But if you look at the conversion rates compared to other selling systems, the dirty and hard selling techniques, they do conversion, but they don't do it as on the high level than other systematic approaches do. Um, but since most of the people use hard selling techniques and some of the dirty or all of the dirty sales tricks, we as a consumer see much more of that market size. While if you go into a more professional world, you will see different techniques, which are much more on a higher conversion. They also have to be on a higher conversion rate than in a B2C consumer world. So as a consumer, and especially as a B2C consumer, you have to be very aware that the insecurity cell is something which is used extensively from starting out over limiting time and amount into opening out a wound for your like you and telling you you're not good enough and but you can fix it so the insecurity cell is a really mean cell for the client but and now back to who i'm talking the most to there if you are kind of like my target group small to medium-sized business owner you have to do your own sales and you do an insecurity cell um, over time and time again, there is a downside to it. The clients I am allowed to work for um, normally, and quite all of them, have quite high moral standards. Their ethic is very high. They want to do an excellent job with their products and the services. So if they use this psychology mechanism, as always, if you do something I'm not aware of, and especially something which is so deep ingrained in getting into the psychology in the head of another person, there is a drawback for you personally. And a drawback which you normally don't see and which will probably come up quite over time. The over time thing here is um, you use an insecurity cell, you open up a wound and um, like sprinkle already salt and anything on it and then move on and then you want to kind of upsell or cross sell your client and since you don't know better or yeah i'm saying you don't know better um you do that again and again but your client is kind of crumbling down you don't know what's going to happen and you're feeling ah, shitty as hell some clients i have um which come from different kind of like different sales schools um they have that feeling that they want to do any kind of sales anymore because they have these understanding of how mean sales is and the problem is sometimes i have to say yeah your last five years where you did a mean sales job that's not fun so these dirty sales tricks are for one hand that you have an awareness as a consumer how you're getting played and what's going to happen to you and triggering your insecurities is one of the biggest sales pitches out there but if you're on the other side and you use that kind of dirty sales tricks you have to understand that there's always a price to pay. So you should be very aware of probably not using every dirty sales trick in the book if you don't want to ruin yourself on a psychological level because parts of you totally understand what's gonna happen. That's why there are these myths that in sales, the narcissistic people and the big ego and even the sociopaths are much bigger in that field, which is not totally true. They are in the hard selling world. That's a true sentence. Yes, they are, because it's a system that fits them well. But the sales world and the marketing world is not only hard selling. Problem is, yes, again, in the B2C world, you see the most of it. Depending on where you live, you even see solemnly that. But in a B2B world or in a um, in even different um, aspects, and that's why we enjoy sometimes all the stuff Apple does so much, it's not a hard selling pitch. You see the point? Um, so that's why we enjoy even, and that's kind of like what you take out of these dirty sales tricks. Be aware of what's happening to you. Be aware, are you using these? And if you are using these, are you aware that there are prices to pay? First of all, always the big problem, dirty sales tricks and long-term um, does not really fit long-term success. Um, some dirty sales tricks are much more awful on your even your own psych and um, your own psychology and your own mind because you're going against what you normally stand for and how you normally would approach work so 
as bigger that divide get, it's not a happy thing to do. As there's a big problem if you move away from your core beliefs and if the divide gets too big, it's going to not be happy with you around. And the other side is always checking in as uh, if you're a consumer that you'll be aware of that to a certain degree. Sales is always about changing the mind of a person, but you can do it with very different ways. And it's not about breaking the person but sales can be approached that way so the insecurity cell is about targeting the deep the, the deep hidden insecurities yes there are teams around there that think about how what is the deepest inside pain selling over pain is a classical insecurity cell and it's sometimes is it more about, and that's why it sometimes gets so complicated if you want to get out of a hard sell, is you still sometimes do the same, but how you do it, in which kind of order and which words you use are very different. One question I got in German and I got on the English is why I don't always use the most tangible um, form, um, like tangible words, which could explain an insecurity cell, because I really don't want to. Um, the thing is, as soon as you hear them, you kind of start replicating them. So think so that's one of these um, dirty sales tricks, especially now that we've gone down the road into that, are sometimes a little more complicated and probably you have to watch them two times. Probably sorry, is um, as soon as it's like, don't think about the pink elephant. What does your brain? Yes, it does. Think about the pink elephant. And as you start hearing more and more. Um, examples of dirty um, sales formula uh, formulas or dirty sales communication, you start using them. That's not the idea of the dirty sales tricks. So there will be some episodes where I combine them and show them to you, but there will be a big disclaimer hedge on it. And there also will not be open to the public. So the whole combination of dirty sales tricks will be in the feminist economy, academy behind the paywall, and the English one is starting up on the 1st of November. The German speaking ones are coming earlier. So, but they won't be behind a paywall because then I can at least make sure that I know who are the people in there that I have a little bit of a wiggling room who I know is in there and can address it on the long version, um, not like in 15 to 20 minutes. So, targeting insecurities. I would advise on if you're a small business owner, a mid sized business owner, and look at your sales strategies have a hard good look if you target insecurities if you target insecurities then at least do it the right way and close them again level them up again don't let them down don't let them be in the rabbit hole and the dark dark thing in it level them up and help them out it that is totally fine and that's called normally a gap cell but it's not only targeting the insecurities if you're on the consumer side and have like that feeling of that's not feeling well, that's not feeling right, take a step back. And the easiest way to get out of the insecurity cell, especially if it's a limiting part, is take some time to make a good decision. It's always about that. Um, it's a very good book, which is awfully written. So Cayman's um, Thinking Fast and Slow. It's a great book, but it's a book. It's a work. You have to work through it. I love that book. But to get um, as a consumer or a, a buyer out of the rut of being targeted with too many dirty sales tricks, there is one easy thing, and that is stepping back and advice on slow thinking. Think it through, think hard, sleep one to ten nights over it, and then move on. And a good um, service provider, um, especially in services, should be there the next ten days at least and probably the next year so they're not going to go away if they're going to tell you that that they're going to go away i probably shouldn't buy that anything there so uh, helping you out of a dirty sales trick as a consumer or a buyer as always take your time do the slow thinking do a little bit of the rational thinking and use all what you have learned now about how the different psychology moments work to get yourself a little more distance by it if you're on the other side, have a good hard look on your sales techniques, on your tactics you use to make the people buy stuff from you. There are prices to pay. Um, the prices to pay are, can be long-term success that is not coming. 
the process can be your own mind that is playing tricks and you end up feeling well. So yes, if you use the hard selling techniques and dirty sales techs, techniques, there is a price to pay. There is a reason why in the sales world so many people drop out of that field and why it's also one of the highest paying positions because yeah, people are viable. And, um, but it's not about the sales in itself. It's about wrong systems and sales. It's about the wrong techniques. It's not human centered. It's not based off client psychology. It's about optimizing the sales psychology. And that's about breaking kind of the free will of a client. It's all about the yes, not about a good decision. And that's where you should check in with your own sales techniques. Do I work on a yes or do I work that my potential client make a good um, conscious decision on moving forward or not? That's the big difference at a starting point. So here we are back again at our dirty sales tricks, another round of it. There will be not that many left. Um, and then we move on. I think we move on to the classical sales mistakes people do because there is a big difference because, between a mistake and a dirty sales trick. But it all fits together and don't forget without sales no business growth never gonna work out that way you cannot skip the sales if you want to grow your business stabilize your business or have a business no sales no business so have a great rest week um we are enjoying a late summer with a very nice weather outside so i'm gonna do that a little bit working with open doors and um see you soon bye